Today I'm replacing the fuel transfer pump with built-in fuel pressure regulator. Here's what it looks like when this part totally fails. Here is the easiest demonstration of all time. All you have to do is lift up with your bare hands on the seat bottom. That's right, lift up, no special tools required, and that entire seat bottom comes off the car. Then you can remove one single seat belt receptacle and remove that entire seat bottom out of the car and out of your space so you can move on to doing something like replacing your fuel pump. Okay, first we're going to remove this Torx bolt. This is a T50, uh, so we can remove the seat belt receptacle here on the driver's side rear. That will release the seat belt so we can move the seat out of the way. and that's gonna give us a lot more space to work. Okay, here we are from the passenger side of the car. Here's where the fuel pump lives. And on the driver side of the car here, this is where the transfer pump lives. Now the fuel transfer pump is the one that we're gonna be replacing today. However, it is connected to the fuel pump, so we still have to take this uh, passenger side apart as well. Just wanna note, there's also a recall, which I'll link down below for the N52 E70, where the harness for the fuel pump here goes bad and there's a recall where BMW will replace free of charge the fuel pump and the harness. And as you can see here, this looks like there's some electrical tape wrapped around where the harness has previously been repaired by BMW. You can see further on down here is the factory cloth tape. And so that gives me a little bit of a indication here that the recall has already been done for the harness and the fuel pump. All right, next we're gonna remove these four, uh, these look like 10 millimeter nuts to remove this access plate off. And we'll also do the same on this side so we have room to work and inspect, see what we're working with. Also check out the piece of packing tape here holding this foam cover down. I wonder if this is factory BMW or if this was done at some point by a third party. If you know, let me know in the comments below. Now, since we're working with the fuel pump assembly here, just to be extra safe, I'm going to pop into the trunk here remove this plastic cover here there's just a couple phillips head screws i think there's maybe four of them take this uh, compartment storage compartment out and disconnect the uh, one of the cables on the battery just to be safe and just as a reminder this is a 10 millimeter
Okay, these four nuts are removed. Now we can pry up the access cover. And here is our fuel pump assembly. And I'm gonna disconnect those plugs, take a picture of course, just so I know where everything goes. So it helps me and helps you. I would recommend doing this with your phone, take a picture of everything. So in case you forget exactly the orientation of anything, you can refer back to your photos later. Squeeze this little tab right here and pull that off. Okay, now we can get this harness out of the way. Get this plate out of the way. Store this over here. And so basically what the fuel transfer pump does, which we're replacing, on this side. Um, this shares a split fuel tank underneath here and it transfers fuel across and basically that's what this tube connection is here. Um, this fuel line goes under here and all the way across to this side and uh, that's why we're taking off the fuel pump side here because we need to access uh, this fuel line right here. So now let's move over to this side and we'll take that plate off and see what that looks like. Here is the driver's side. All you have to do is use your fingernail to push down on this blue clip right here. Push down, and then we're gonna pull it, slide it back. And this whole line will come right off. So you can see here when I press down on this with my nail, those two um, blue clips spread apart like that. And that allows you to take it off. And of course to put it back on, this fitting just slides right back on like, like so. Okay, the next step here is to use a quarter inch drive small ratchet with a seven millimeter socket. And we're gonna use that to loosen up the hose clamp. There is a fitting, and I'm not sure, sure if you can see it from here on this angle. Let's see, right down, right down here. And that clamps this plastic fitting here, and then there's a green BMW seal underneath it. So stick the ratchet in, kind of a tight spot. and do your best to loosen up that clamp until this ring can be removed. Here's the driver's side of the car, and here's a close-up look of that clamp being loosened to seven millimeter. Now this is a pretty poor quality ratchet, but I think I'm actually gonna head over to Home Depot and grab one of the Husky, um, like the fine tooth one. And basically that gives you a lot more clicks 
for a small amount of movement and that's perfect for a situation like this where you don't have a lot of space and you need to get something like this clamp loosened. Here's a look at the transfer pump on the driver's side of the car. Here's another one of those connectors um, we talked about. So if you pull on it, this is still connected. All we have to do is use our thumbnail, our fingernail here, push in that blue tab, and then slide it off. And again, to reinstall the fuel line, no tools needed, just push this back on until it clicks. All right, now how to remove this one. There's two tabs. There's one little plastic tab that sticks out here and then one on the inside. So we're gonna have to use a flathead screwdriver on the inner tab. And what I'm gonna do is push down on this, squeeze this side with my finger, and squeeze this side with the flathead screwdriver, and then that line will be disconnected. So let's see if I can catch it on camera for you guys. And there you have it, that line is disconnected and that one did spill a little bit of fuel. So have some rags ready and uh, yeah, beware of the fuel spillage. All right, like I mentioned yesterday, I was gonna run and grab a new, uh, like a high tooth uh, design ratchet. This one is a 90 tooth, so it's very sensitive to uh, input, meaning look how nicely this works. This ratchet alone is going to make this job significantly easier. All right, here's what it looks like with the fuel pump removed. As you can see, there's a plug right here. There's two lines. There's also a small, very small electrical electrical connector um, right under here that you have to reach your hand into the tank and disconnect from uh, the sending unit. These two lines, or the three lines here, are actually for the sending unit on this side. So now, now that we have this side removed, we can swap out this part with the new one, and then we can put the fuel pump back in and connect all these lines. There's three, and connect the small electrical um, plug that's uh, just below uh, that surface there where it's not visible in this picture. At this point, I really struggled a bit to get the old transfer pump out. I actually ended up rotating the entire thing 180 degrees, and somehow I could then pull it out of the tank. As they say in the Bentley manual, installation is the reverse of removal. Okay, it's the next day. Uh, I drove the car last night for about an hour. Everything seemed fine, but uh, I waited about 13 hours since the last time I drove it to see if there's any pressure drop. Uh, that was the symptom I was finding previously where you would park overnight and it would have an extended cranking period before starting. So let's check it out and see if this issue is finally resolved. Interesting. 